Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. This morning, I'm going to fix the Solo Backpack Sprayer. What I believe is wrong with the sprayer. The last time I sprayed, I could barely get any pressure out of it. Although it did spray one of the times I filled the tank, it sprayed just fine the entire time, that entire tank. But to spray the vineyard, I have to fill that three times and it only sprayed correctly one of the three times. So it may have a clogged filter somewhere or it may need this repair kit. The thing is, I've been spraying wettable powders. Let me show you what a wettable powder is. This right here, Captain 50 wettable powder. A lot of the fungicides that you spray in a vineyard will come as a wettable powder. And it's very coarse and gritty. So they make a different model for spraying that and I didn't know it. That's my fault. I should have got a diaphragm model and this is a piston pump model. So I'm going to take it apart and see if that's the problem or if it's just clogged. If it's just clogged, I'm going to clean it out, put it back together and I'll hang this on the wall until I need it. But if the rings and all that stuff are damaged, then I'll use a repair kit. What I did was buy a new backpack sprayer. This is a Chapin model that I did an unboxing on a little while ago, and I'm going to be using that in the vineyard. And what I'm going to use this one for is spraying killers, 2,4-D and glyphosate, which don't involve any wettable powders. So let me get this up on the table saw and we'll take it apart and see what's wrong with it. So when I was putting together the other sprayer, that one had a strainer right here. Okay, that is not a strainer. That's that's just the orifice there. Take a look right here and see if there's one in here, but I do not think so. Nope. All right, so there's no strainers in the wand assembly. We'll see if there's one down by the piston there. This hose appears to be a better hose than the one on the Chapin sprayer. That one is like kinking right here already, but it appears to be bigger than this hose. But time will tell on that. This one, I believe, has a bad valve in here because it does not shut off all the way unless you lock it in the off position. Oh, it's probably the spring. All right, well, we'll do, we'll check this a bit later. Let's get this valve taken apart. Or pump taken apart. Okay, there's a screw right here. I believe all I'm going to have to do is take that off. And it looks like the pump will come off, but we'll see.
Okay, so let's take this ring off here, see if the whole assembly will slide out. Okay, it's going to be a bit more difficult than I thought. Got to take the handle off. I busted open that blister pack. I wanted to leave that intact in case I didn't need to uh, rebuild this. But I'll have to put that in a put that in a Ziploc baggie if I don't need it. But the instructions say to remove the handle. These are pretty rusty. I'm going to have to put some grease on these when I put them back on. All right, handle off. These instructions are terrible, but I did notice that this, this nut was just loose as all get out. The other one, let me see, the other one is tight, but this one was, well, I don't know, about eighth of an inch or more out. But it doesn't look like I can get at it. It says to rotate to take this off and then rotate rotate this pump and then pull it out but it still has a mechanism coming from here into it and I'll have to figure out it doesn't say in the instructions how to get that out so let me mess around with this for a little while all right Loosen, but do not remove stop plate 17 on 2009 models and earlier it doesn't have that. So we go on to three. Remove the nut and bolt from the protective cover 51 which is 51 is that outside piece which I've already done that's the nut and bolt and then where is that again? Then remove the protective cover from the piston cylinder 40 which is up inside of there, but it's that part right there. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do right now. It doesn't want to come out because this handle is still on there. It it doesn't say how to get the how to get the handle out of the way. It's got like a lever that goes up into the bottom there. So I'm gonna have to find out how to do that, and then I'll show you. All right, I got it figured out. So like I said, on this arm, there's like a little lever that goes up inside of here. This has like a little peg that goes through the hole on the side. And it's the same on the other side. It's not like you can turn it and then just pull it off. But this is really flexible. So you just pull it apart and you can lift it off of there. So this is the part that does the pumping. It's a little lever that goes down in there. Now, when I put it back together, I can, this bolt right here was really loose. It wasn't this loose, but it was really loose. When I put it back together, I can get this bolt nice and tight. But for now, we're gonna take it out and get the other one out as well. This is 730 seconds. This might be metric, but I have no idea where my metric Allen wrenches are right now, so this is working. Yeah, these are really rusty. I have to grease these up. Okay, and that was just screwed right into this arm right here. Very, very rusty. 
probably should have used brass there, but they didn't. All right, so I believe this will just pop right out now. Let me see if there's special instructions for this as well. The instructions just say to pull it out, so I guess I'll just keep on trying. Okay, well, it says to remove the piston and replace the this Viton collar, or whatever it's called. Um, I don't know, I'm going to clean this up and see if it needs it. Um, and then it says to put Vaseline on it, but I have plumber's grease. But the part I'm stuck on, I put this back on. I jumped the gun taking that off. It says to remove the cylinder here, the piston cylinder, by turning it counterclockwise. It has a little notch here that's supposed to like pop out of its little thing there, but I, for the life of me, I can't get this thing to turn. So I, that's why I put this back on so that doesn't turn as well, but I don't see how this is, you know, I really don't know. I'm going to try for a little while and see if I can get this off, but I don't know how, you know, it just seems nearly impossible to get off of there. All right, I'll try for a while and see if I can get it off. Okay, I've been trying a strap wrench on it. It's like nothing is going to get this damn thing off. I don't have any kind of tool. This is plastic. I mean, and it's a cylinder. You don't want to damage it at all. He it said it's got a little notch down here where it connects, but that's just to keep it from turning while in use. That's not what's holding it in. It must be in threads in there somewhere. That would be, this is the piston, yeah, this is the cap, this is the connecting rod, that's a piston, that's a Viton cover, and here's the cylinder, and then it has a valve body inside of it, and when in use, that valve body opens and closes, the valve body's right here, you're supposed to replace the valve body by reaching in there and taking off the clip in there, there's a little red clip, you're supposed to reach in there with the long pliers and take that off. I believe I have the right tool for that. But, uh, you got to get at the other end. This has to come off. And I have no idea how to do it. If I, if I were to put like a big vice grips or something on here, it would, uh, it would ruin the cylinder. Alright, I'll play around with this for a while, but... Looks like I'm at a dead standstill unless I can get this cylinder off of here. All right, I am stuck on five of 12. Unscrew the piston cylinder by rotating counterclockwise. So counterclockwise would be this way. And I've tried a strap wrench. I've tried it by hand and I just can't get this thing off. And if I use any more force, I'll just break this piston. I mean, it's pretty weak plastic. If I put anything like a giant vice grips or something on here, it'll just destroy this thing. So what I'm gonna do is go produce this video real quick and put it online and contact Solo and see if they can help with it. 
let them watch the video and see if they know what's wrong with it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I can't see according to these instructions. No, I'm not. So, so we'll see what they say about it. And then I'll post an update. Hopefully after I get this piston off, I'm just going to put this kit in regardless. It's only, what is it? Five, six parts. So I'm going to go take these, the piston itself and the cover and take them in the house and get them nice and cleaned up. And hopefully they'll get back with me quick enough so I can get this done soon. But again, I'm not relying on this. I'm going to be using this for 2,4-D and glyphosate only. So I don't need to use it right now, but I would like to get this done and get it off my bench. I got other projects that I need to get done. So if you want to see the update on this, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you give the video a like and or share it, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.